Hello and welcome back to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered. I'm John Dicko with the Drone Launch Academy here to find the answers to your drone questions. These are drone questions that you yourself submit. And this question, this is a tough one. This is actually a question we get a lot and it's a very hard one to answer. What are the best consumer drones that are made here in the U.S. or at least not made in China? With me, I have David Young, our founder of DLA. Thank you for joining me here today. What's up, John? So I saw this question from Rob come in. First off, thanks for submitting the question, Rob. And it sucks to answer this question. So I'll just give it to you straight. If you think that I'm about to give you a bunch of options that you've never heard of before, and I'm going to give you some great answer, that's not going to be the case. I'll tell you what drones are out there and do exist. Are they good? Ugh. I don't know. It's up for debate. We'll talk about it. We'll give some context around why this might be, at least from my perspective. So just to answer the question right off the bat, what are the best high-end consumer drones that are made in the USA, or at least not made in China? I don't think they exist. Short answer. There are some consumer drones made in the USA, but most of the United States drone manufacturers have exclusively focused on enterprise drones. And what I mean by enterprise drones, I mean expensive, and the primary customer are large businesses. And we can get into why that is in a minute. So companies like Skydio used to make some consumer drones that I would say were good. Maybe people didn't like them as much as DJI, but they were good. And then they phased that business out completely. If you go to their website right now, I did it just before we hopped on. You know, they had this Skydio 2 Plus before that used to be a consumer offering, no longer available for consumer. They only offer it to enterprise customers. You can't even get pricing on their website. You find it on Amazon. It says now this is currently no longer available. So you really, you know, they phased out offering that to consumer customers. And I think even enterprise customers, they might just support the ones that they've already had sold before because we, we had some energy customers on the for part 107 training that we mm -hmm. do. And one of our large energy customers used all Skydio 2 drones. They're focusing on that kind of stuff. There's obviously DJI, but those are Chinese made. And I think the question mm -hmm. comes from a lot of people being worried that the US legislature is trying to do many things. It keeps coming up. People keep putting amendments in or keep submitting different things to try mm -hmm. to get it to where DJI drones either can't be sold in the US or it's more difficult for them to be sold in the US or certain entities can't use them primarily from security concerns, uh, which is funny because everybody's walking around with an iPhone that's assembled in China. But yeah. Uh, that's just me. <laughs> um, so I think that's where the concern comes from. And then you think uh, the next company that always comes up is Autel. Oh, well, what about Autel? Mm -hmm. You know, they're, well, really, I think they just had like a U.S. subsidiary, but their stuff's also either made in China or has close ties with China. I haven't dug into the Autel background too much, but they're kind of getting lumped in now with DJI where they've got ties to China. It's like, okay, well, they're out because they were a, a decent you know, next option. Then if you, I'm like, well, what if you go down in quality? I know they said, what's the best? But I'm like, do you see these EXO drones? They advertise a lot. I've never personally used one because I didn't want to spend the money on it. But I looked around. So Sally French, she's been on this podcast before. She's mm -hmm. a good friend of Drone Launch Academy. She does a ton of drone reviews. Her website is The Drone Girl. So I was just looking at a few things. And if you go to thedronegirl.com, you can find, she did a review recently. This was a few months ago of the Blackhawk 3 EXO drone. And it was like, yeah, this one kind of sucks too. So technically, EXO is owned by a US-made company, but they're manufactured outside of the US. She's got more information on this. But I, if you look through her thing, it's like uh, $850 for this EXO drone. It's supposed to sort of compare to the DJI Mini 4 Pro. DJI Mini 4 Pro, less expensive. The Blackhawk 3 Pro does have a longer flight time. And it's supposed to have good, you know, 4K video. It's got the same sensor as the DJI Mini 4 Pro. But I think she just found it kind of buggy. It's a lot heavier than the DJI Mini 4 Pro. It didn't seem like if you look at the end, it's basically like, hey, it's not really a seamless flying experience. But if you really want an American made drone, that's an option. So unfortunately, there's not really a good consumer grade that's good American made drone. Now on the enterprise side, you do have options and it doesn't sound like that's what you're looking for. But I can just walk you through a few of those real quick. If there's someone else listening that's curious. So, you know, Brink, they focus on law enforcement. They're a U.S. made company. Again, their stuff's pretty expensive. I believe it's enterprise focused. It's for you know law enforcement first responder. A non-Chinese made drone. This I believe this are they're a Swiss company, Wingtra. They mm. do are used a lot for like mapping, mining, construction applications. Fixed wing drone. I think those are in the 15k ballpark. But I know some we're doing an advanced mapping and modeling course right now, and one of the survey managers of an engineering and construction company that is one of our instructors. They use Wing Tree drones and he loves it. Very good. Again, it's expensive, but it's also not not Chinese made. If you're more of in the photo, video, like cinematography business, you know, Freefly Systems, they're a, an American company. So like the Freefly Alta are, are used 
a lot. They carry, they're more like heavy lift. They carry nicer cameras, but you're looking 20 to 30 grand for those types of deals. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that's not a consumer grade thing. You're just going to go out and pick up inspired flight technologies, another company they're focused on the enterprise level, sort of lifting heavier cameras, you know, bigger drones. Those look more like the Matrice style DJI drones that are in that kind of enterprise category. Same thing with Skyfish. I saw them at a conference. I saw their CEO present. Great guy. They work really well with Sony Alpha drones. So like that's actually one of the cameras we use for our courses and carry that and other sensors. But again, enterprise level stuff. Another one, I've met these folks at a conference. Very nice. I met the the two co-founders, Wing Expand or Wing Expand, Mm -hmm. just with an X. Uh, It's pretty cool. These drones like pack up real small and the wings can expand after you transport them. But again, they're uh, fixed wing drones focused on enterprise applications, military forest fire was their uh, kind of initial angle detecting forest fires, not really a consumer grade drone. So my advice to you would be ride the DJI train as long as you can. And I think if it does come to where DJI is forced out of the picture, somebody will figure out how to step up and fill the demand void, hopefully. Mm-hmm. But I just don't have a great answer for this question or an answer that that I like. The answer is kind of just there isn't really a good option. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of bad news right now. But I actually I appreciate you kind of at least providing from your perspective, the, the reasoning behind a lot of U.S. companies for not necessarily building a consumer. Yeah. Well, I think mm-hmm. the reason why there's not a good option is if you're going to manufacture drones and make money with it. Now, I'm not a drone manufacturer, but I know enough of them to kind of gather this. If you're going to make really any electronics hardware at mass scale and sell it for consumer prices, you have to be able to make a ton of them and sell a ton of them. That's how DJI can be successful. First off, they're in China. So the cost of manufacturing is much cheaper than the United States, cheaper labor. You don't want to get into all economics, but obviously it's cheaper to manufacture things in China than the US. So they can manufacture it for cheaper. They can make a lot of them and they can sell a lot of them. And so if you're, if you have a, a drone and you're only making 10% on it, I don't know what their margins are, but let's say you're making 10%, you got to sell a ton of those to make it worth your time to sell that. I know that the margins are smaller on consumer grade drones because we are a sub dealer for some other DJI dealers in the US. So to be a direct dealer with DJI, you got to do millions of dollars in sales per year. We don't really sell that many drones. Just typically if we have contracts with schools and things like that, and they want to purchase through us, we'll also include the drones. That's why we have that. But if we sell a school, let's say a DJI Mini 4, right, for, you know, 900 bucks, we're going to make like a tiny fraction on that. Like we barely would cover shipping, I think, on those types of drones not really worth it. By the time you do credit card fees and shipping, it's like we don't make any money. However, if a school wants to buy an agriculture drone or like a Matrice 350 or one of these ones that are now you're getting into five figures, we're required to keep the price at a set retail amount. Like DJI requires this minimum advertised price and like thousands of dollars on one of those drones. So I know the margins on the bigger enterprise drones are much higher because they price them for enterprise customers that are willing to pay more. And so if you're a drone manufacturer and you're like, oh, I could make a billion of these tiny drones and have to sell all of them to make a little bit of money, or I only have to sell a much smaller amount of these bigger drones as long as I find the right customers and I want to make the same amount of money, you're obviously going to shift that way. I mean, think about Skydio. Again, I don't work at Skydio. I don't know the people at Skydio, but I imagine I know that they're a company that's raised a lot of money. They have investors that are like, hey, you need to figure out how to make this a profitable business. If they're trying to focus on enterprise customers and they're trying to focus on consumer customers, those are two different things. So you're splitting your attention, trying to make features for one audience and then features for another audience. You're sort of pulling yourself in two different directions. And if this customer is much less profitable and this customer, guess what you're going to do? You're going to cut off the non-profitable customer that's causing you to divide your attention and you're going to focus fully on where you think you can make the most money. And so unfortunately for the consumers in the United States, that's all shifted to enterprise, just like there's a lot of people who make drones for military applications. A ton of companies out there like that. Because you get a military contract, boom, you can get like seven figures in the door right there and fund your operations versus, you know, the military is less likely, I would say, to go out and buy a bunch of, oh, we want really, you know, ones that have nice, pretty pictures and, you know, have the DJI smart follow me features, you know, stuff like that. So like more of the consumer features. So you really just, and that happened in the software space too. If you look at Drone Deploy, good software, I've used them before, but they just phased out sort of all of their focus on consumer packages because they used to have pricing that was a little bit more friendly for like a single pilot, or I'm just doing a few mapping missions, things like that. They don't offer that anymore. I think their base pricing starts at like, five or $600 per month. And then I've talked to them 
I know a lot of people over there, super nice, like Grant, really, really nice guy. But when I've talked to them before about like partnering together, he's like, well, if you're trying to focus this on the individual solo pilots, that's not really our audience. We want big construction companies who have, you know, 40 pilots who all need this. They, they need it across the whole enterprise because then they have to deal with one customer and they're making a whole lot of money in one place versus, you know, trying to, again, spread their attention across many and the features are different. And so you just see a lot of consolidation towards focusing on enterprise customers because that's where some of these companies who have raised a bunch of money, they've got pressure to make money. That's where they think is their best shot at becoming a profitable business. My first drone was a Parrot drone and I was surprised going back years later to look for other Parrot drones and there were none in the kind of at the <laughs> consumer level. And so that was yeah. definitely, there's, a, there's an example of an American company that uh, shifted. Well, Parrot is actually a French company but they oh. have a U.S. subsidiary. And again, they still make drones, but they're all focused sort of at that higher level, right? Their Parrot Anafi drone is like, it's looking now like four grand, five grand and up. So people are focusing on drones where they can, if they're going to make a drone, they want to be able to make money on it. Well, David, I appreciate you coming on here. And I hope there's things happening. There's discussions being had when it comes to DJI and Chinese made drones that could create some ripples across the industry. And we can kind of see maybe years down the road if things are any different. Yeah. And I don't know when someone's going to be watching this, but if you're watching this and it's like, you know, still 2024 and you want your option of keeping DJI drones, then I would recommend writing to your congressperson or s senator and telling them, please don't restrict the sale of DJI drones in the US. I'm not going to get into some of the lobbying efforts that have happened from American made drone companies to get that through. In my opinion, a little bit shady ties to people who used to work for politicians now work for some of these drone companies and then the people who used to work for are now the ones sponsoring these bills to ban the dji drones so it's like the most obvious connection you could ever think of yeah of like, hey we're yeah. gonna hire you away and now we want you to influence the people you used to work for to eliminate our foreign competitors so yeah um, oh god i love the lobby yeah i i don't, I don't have any firsthand knowledge but just when you look at some of the just obvious connections you're like oh this looks a little convenient you know so i hope it doesn't go through but again i've talked to some security personnel you know like i used to work for the government i did forensic accounting obviously not like cybersecurity, but i've talked to some people in the government who are cybersecurity people specifically who have worked in counter uas stuff and they say oh no there really is a real threat and there's you know been examples of blah 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 they couldn't give me any specific examples you know because of security because of you know security concerns so i don't know i mean like sure maybe does the capability somehow exist sure is that a constant threat and dji is just and china's loves to look at what's in my backyard and and see if i mowed the grass i'm guessing probably not but whatever i don't know i yeah. like dji drones i'd like to keep them around pending yeah. it, you know, barring other other things. You leave us with a good point. What can you do? You can talk to your congressperson. You can you can talk to your representative. You can you can let them know how you feel. Maybe if enough feel this way, we can make a difference. Yeah, I'm like, listen, if you're going to ban DJI drones, that's fine. But let's ban iPhones and anything else that touches China, right? Because those are listening devices, you know, and they got cameras on them too. What's that's the right. difference? It, just one flies. So whatever. Something to dig into. That's for sure. David, I really appreciate you coming on here, sharing this very popular topic, very newsworthy topic. And I'm sure it's not the, the last time we're going to be talking about this. So thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, thanks, John. Hey, and if you have a drone question, please send it our way. You can submit a drone question over ydqa.io. Go there, type it in. We'll see it. Or if you're part of the Drone Launch Connect community, type it in there. People are asking questions constantly. Until then, we'll see you in the sky.